Um, yeah, the word primitive is an interesting way to get into the, um, the way that our culture and our worldview has situated and um, f- obscured the meaning and importance of the indigenous phase of, of human life and human existence. Now, the word primitive initially meant that which is closest to an issue directly from the source or the origin. In other words, this would be a term that is uh, a, a very high and exalted meaning because the source, of course, is the divinity or the origin of creation. And <clears throat> the, the word somewhere the, uh, around the 17th century, the consensual meaning of the word primitive was shifted to those uh, peoples or aspects of creation that have failed to be responsive to the influences of evolution. So immediately we see this word has been changed in terms and in relationship to uh, the theory of evolution that was developed during this period of time. Now, this may seem like a small thing, but most of the words that we utilize, we have never actually contacted them through their lexiconal meaning. We have not looked at them, uh, the, the meaning, the, the established meaning in a dictionary. We pick up the, what we mean by words from some sort of consensus radar. Uh, and uh, the people who understand how meaning uh, of words can shift the, our internal view of reality um, were very active at the time of the uh, introduction of the Industrial Revolution and the change from traditional society in Europe into the urbanization and industrialization phase. So this word is part of a a whole social program um, and agenda that uh, changed from a positive to a negative Uh, the meaning of the word primitive. Now, this may seem like a small matter, but uh, as we know now from cognitive studies, the the meanings of words affect us in the same way that our direct perception of reality affects us. In other words, we know that when we see a tree, for example, the, the only thing that we actually receive internally of the tree is neuroelectric impulses that travel along the optic track or if we touch a tree along the the nerves uh, closest to the skin in our hand. And all that uh, electrical um, fluctuations and impulses enter the brain and somewhere in the internal chambers of the brain an image is formed that is associated either with that electrical magnetic activity of the, uh, of the senses or the same process of image formation takes place when we hear the word tree. Uh, image forms in our mind. So language has the same power to affect the internal image that we have of reality as does our actual sensory perception of the external world. So this is a a very important fact, and and people who are interested in influencing the worldview of populations or cultures uh, know that language is a direct access to that. So um, the, the philosopher Owen Barfield has studied the change of meanings of words in the English language that occurred uh, surrounding the Industrial Revolution. Um, They were all, of course, happened in relationship to a group of the actually Royal Academy of Science in England. Uh, And primitive and our worldview and our understanding of the indigenous world was reshaped at this time and, and particularly through language and our understanding and relationship to the past.
Now, so with that as a, uh, a doorway, an entrance into uh, the rediscovering what is the true nature and true meaning of this way of life, um, from, uh, from the, that beginning of a word change, a, a shift in our internal uh, view of uh, our origins, the, in, in connection with the theory of Darwinism, there began to be circulated an idea that the indigenous period of, was a brutish period of, of um, hand-to-mouth, bloody desperation of people uh, having to spend all their time seeking food from, from a uh, hostile environment. And uh, it was brutish, it was low, it was insecure, it was unsafe. Now, what we have found out in a period, say, within the last 10 or 15 years, particularly through a branch of science <coughs> called paleopathology. These are people who take the ex exhumed remains, the skeletal remains um, of, from very old archaeological sites, and study the skeletons um, for evidence of disease, malnutrition, uh, stress, deformation of the very basic structure of the body. And, and they <coughs> have come up with uh, a wealth of information that indicates that prehistoric, pre-agricultural people had far lower incidences of infectious diseases. They are, their skeletal formation and, and particularly their teeth show that they um, uh, had far less problems with malnutrition. They were much better nourished. They were taller, stronger. Uh, an interesting thing on the formation of the spine, uh, early agricultural people all, up until this day show signs of compression and deformation in the spine due to the burdensome form of work that agriculture introduced. So with these and other tests that in, in China and in Peru, they actually have found prehistoric feces. And the examination of that shows that, uh, that hunter and gatherers were far less uh, problems with parasitic uh, uh, intrusions into the organism. So this opened a, a crack in the egg that, uh, in terms of a very factual, you know, the kind of information that we need to have because we're impressed into the philosophy of scientism. This is empirical data that shows repeatedly that the hunter and gatherer had a much healthier, uh, better nourished uh, way of life than is evident from early agriculture. We understand then that the word primitive does not mean brutish, low, backward, degenerate, but it means that which has remained closest to the origins, to the source. And with that understanding, we can understand better the whole orientation of uh, traditional societies towards a reverence towards the past, towards a reverence towards the elders, towards a reverence towards the ancestors, because the further back we go, the closer we get to the origins. This also is a way of understanding why in traditional cultures, children were uh, held in such high esteem because a child comes uh, immediately and freshly from the source, from the spirit world. And so these two characteristics which have been made to seem to mean a culture is backward and superstitious really is based on the understanding of the actual meaning of the word primitive, that which issues and remains closest to the origin and the source. So in this way, then, the hunters and gather uh, culture is that part of ourselves, of our own racial and, and memory of that which ha represents a closeness and reiteration of the origins. And Although we uh, fail to acknowledge this because we've been so orientated towards the future and because 
the way that history has been shaped for us, we actually begin our identification with, with the so-called civilization. Um, and we easily go back to Greece, and some of us have had enough um, involvement in history to recognize the value of the legacy of Egypt. But still, civilization means those who live in cities. And uh, so immediately everything previous to that is not instantly incorporated into our historical identity. So with cities, cities actually meant agriculture. And uh, agriculture meant it had a whole uh, range of implications and impacts on uh, our, our, not only our physiology, which we've talked about, but also our social structure and our social way of being. With agriculture came things like epidemics, war, uh, the control of society by a small hierarchical elite. All these things are inseparable from the act of agriculture. Um, the agricultural period, interestingly, the Gerard Diamond, the anthropologist who first began to unearth the work of the paleopathologists, uh, said that it is evident from this point of view that agriculture is the worst mistake humanity has ever made. Uh, the very idea that land was cut off, fenced, blocked, and people had to be corralled into dense uh, population groups, and, and the establishment of fixed settlement, all of those things have had, although we've only been shown the, that this represents progress and a get greatly forward, no one would accept that war, epidemics, deep social divisions, a, the rule by a elite mi minority actually constitutes an improvement in human life or in the po potentialities of, of the human spirit. Uh, one of the major things is a great deal of social uh, inequality, protect, particularly sexual inequality. The, because city-states that had to defend large areas of agricultural land and hold possession of them um, uh, uh, became competitive units against other de developing city-states, the process of war required that women had to be seen now as strictly as a breeding function. They had to breed increasing numbers of children in order to produce the soldiers and workers to feed the, the constant system of, of uh, agriculture and armaments and war. Uh, this, the agriculture is basic to the understanding of the subjugation of women. It's basic to the uh, idea of the subjugation and cruelty towards animals the enslavement of the plant world. All of these things, of course, were sacrilegious to the hunter and gatherer. 